Blind Government Order of the Day number five. Interrupted debate on the second reading of the Agricultural Compounds and Veterinary Medicines Amendment Bill. Members, when we were last debating the second reading of the Agricultural Compounds and Veterinary Medicines Amendment Bill, Eugenie Sage had the call and has four minutes remaining. She doesn't wish to take that. I call um, the Honourable David Cunliffe for uh, five minutes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It's a pleasure to take a brief call in support of the Agricultural Compounds and Veterinary Medicines Amendment Bill 2015. Uh, Labor does support this bill, sir, representing, as it does, a balance between two important objectives in fostering innovation around our primary industries. Uh, in my brief remarks, sir, I'm just going to describe the balance that it seeks uh, to find, uh, note why that's so important to the New Zealand economy, and note a couple of issues which follow from it. So the balance is uh, designed to foster innovation and to allow our producers to extract competitive advantage by gaining a return on the investment that they have made in agricultural compounds. Um, this might seem a technical part of our economy, but it is important legislation, sir, because some 57 per cent of all research and development undertaken in the New Zealand economy is undertaken in or around the primary sector. And it is in agribusiness, broadly defined from the pasture to the farm gate to the factories which process and then market our protein stream and our fibre stream, that, sir, we believe New Zealand has a global potential competitive advantage. But, sir, uh, we also recognise the challenges on this side of the House. New Zealand invests around about 1.27 per cent of its GDP in research and development. The average across the OECD, sir, is 2.5 per cent, almost exactly double what New Zealand invests, and we have a smaller GDP to start with. Sir, the average for the Small Smart Countries Club, the so-called Small Advanced Economies, is closer to 3 per cent, nearer to triple what New Zealand invests. And that, when you break the problem down, is not primarily a government problem. There's a lot of bipartisanship around science and innovation policy. Previous Labor government, I think members opposite would agree, did a very good job under Pete Hodgson. And much of what the current government's doing, we support, but we would like to take further. So the issue uh, that both sides would recognise is that while the governments have been doing a, a reasonably average job, this private sector investment in R&D in New Zealand has been desultory, around about a third to a quarter of the OECD average, putting us at the back of the pack. And neither government, sir, has really truly cracked that problem. The current government set up Callaghan Innovation to look at manufacturers and services and they've taken an end-to-end -end view of the value chain. That's not a bad thing in principle. It hasn't worked. Business R&D, so-called BIRD, has not increased as a share of GDP. And it is in this field of primary industry, in agriculture and, in, in this case, with respect to agricultural chemicals, um, that we are in this House collectively trying to seek, therefore, a balance between two essentially opposing forces. On the one hand, for a new entrant company or a new developer, it can be an advantage to have short periods of intellectual property protection, short life patents. What this bill does is it provides longer periods of protection uh, for new information that is used to develop or market new agricultural or veterinary compounds. The reason it does that, and it's quite right and we support it, is that that period of protection allows an economic return to be earned from the investment which has been made in the development of those compounds and thus to provide incentives for further private sector R&D. Bayer testified to the Select Committee, sir, that it costs around about a million dollars to develop a new compound and around a half a million, sir, to develop a derivative or an additive compound off that base. And any investor is entitled to a period of time where they can extract a return from that investment uh, without knockoffs eating their margin. The question is how long is enough? And uh, we think this bill strikes a reasonably fair balance, which is why we're supporting it. The, period, the point of difference between the two sides of the House 
is how far should we go in stimulating R&D and innovation. We think that the dairy crisis, sir, I know it's close to your heart as a member from the Waikato, uh, has given everybody a wake-up call around diversification. Uh, we are fortunate that we've had growth in the tourism, construction and other sectors to offset the dairy downturn. This bill is a small step towards further supporting the diversification of our economy and, sir, in that regard, the Labour opposition supports it.